Today's video is going to be all about the Lisa Eldridge Cinnabar eyeshadow palette. So I'm going to be doing the same thing that I did in my Vega video where I do individual swatches of each of these shades and provide relevant comparisons with other shadows in my collection, including a couple of the Liquid Lurex shadows also from Lisa Eldridge. We'll also of course be showing you how I did this eye look and what I've used on my cheeks and my lips. Before we get into it, if you enjoy this video, if you enjoy my content and you'd like to see more from me, I would love if you'd consider subscribing to my channel. I do a ton of content on Lisa Eldridge products as well as lots of other high-end luxury and indie makeup. So without further ado, let's get into the Cinnabar video. I'm going to go in the same order again that I did with my Vega video, so starting there and then going across that way. So the first shade here is Fired Earth. Now this is one of the main shades that I used in my first video on this collection where I was mixing and matching with all of the eyeshadow palettes. And I really enjoyed working with this shade. It's just one of those very useful shades that can work in so many different looks. It's a great transition shade if you want a warmer transition shade. And it's also a great all over one and done type shade. So this is in the Seamless Matte Formula. It's again, raw sienna. It's described as a light caramel. So you can certainly see the warmth in there. And I used this today just to kind of blend out. I had already put a different color all over my lid, but then I just used this one around the edges to blend them out and soften everything out uh, on both the top lid and on the lower lash line as well. I'm not sure that it'll come across on camera, but when I look at this in person, I can see at certain angles there is that very soft sheen from the tiny pearls that are in this seamless matte formula. And as far as comparisons for this shade, I thought the Natasha Denona Bronze would be my most likely candidate. But looking at it, I think there's actually nothing really as similar as I thought there might be in this. This to me looks to be the most similar shade. So that's the shade Beach from the Natasha Denona Bronze palette. So we'll take a look at that. Definitely some similarities, but Beach looks quite a lot more peachy, I would say. It's like there's more orange in that one, where we're getting a more kind of true caramel, almost yellowy undertone in the Lisa Eldridge, more of an orange undertone in the Natasha Denona. Next up is Bronzite, which is a satin metallic, and it's described as a rich, warm bronze. What's that? So again, I'll just mention that the satin metallic formula feels very dense to the touch and quite creamy. So that is bronzite. It's really quite a rich color. I would be interested to see how this one would look just all over the lid as a one and done and maybe just topped with a little bit of the top coat. I think that would be really pretty. From the bronze palette, I think the most likely comparisons will be true copper as well as silk right here. So we'll take a look at those. Silk, true copper. Okay, so it's much more similar to true copper, but I can still see more orange in true copper and more almost like a reddish pink in the Lisa Eldridge bronzite. And I also pulled out this little Victoria Beckham palette. This is the silk palette from Victoria Beckham. This is one that's all satin metallics. And I thought this shade right here, which I believe is just called copper, it's on this finger here, would be the most likely comparison. So again, similar, but this is just a softer color. It doesn't quite have the vibrant warmth of the Lisa Eldridge shade. I also wanted to take a look at two of the liquid Lurexes uh, in combination with this palette. As far as the shade Bronzite goes, I think Lauren is the best comparison. So let's give that a shot. Lauren is looking more orangey yellow, but I think those would still pair really nicely together. And one thing I'm intending to do in at least one of these videos on 
these palettes is to use a liquid Lurex shade as a base all over my lid underneath one of the palettes. I'm really curious to see how that will work. That is one way that I like to use the liquid Lurex. In the past I've used in combination with other uh, powder eyeshadows, so I'm curious to see how the two Lisa Eldridge formulas will uh, work together. We might as well take a look at Diana as well in comparison because it's more orangey than Lauren. So Diana actually looks a little bit more similar, although it is even more vibrant than Bronzite. And the liquid Lurex are just brighter and shinier than these satin metallics. They just have more reflect, kind of a more dimensionality in the shimmer particles. Next up is Fired Earth, which is a seamless matte described as a deep, warm earth brown. That does blend out very smoothly, gives a very blurred effect. And this one worked very nicely for me today too. I used this one again over top of the main mat that I had all over my lid just to build depth in the outer corner. And it applied really beautifully and really smoothly in that way. Don't think there's anything in the bronze palette that would quite match that. I actually wanted to compare it to was the deep brown in the Vega palette because this is a deep cool brown. I think maybe it's described actually as a medium deep, but I just wanted to see how those temperatures would compare. And this is the shade Turbulence from Vega. So I have to say they're not looking all that different, but I can see that Turbulence is cooler while Fired Earth is just a touch warmer and deeper, I think, too. Next up is Lost Summer, another satin metallic described as a warm copper. And this is the metallic I have on the outer part of the lid, while the other metallic bronzite is what I have more on kind of the inner part of the lid. So Lost Summer to me is a very rosy kind of copper. Another one that I think would look amazing as a one and done. I actually wanted to compare this to a couple of the shades in the Muse palette. Uh, this one here, as well as this one. Here we have Tomorrow's Party and Love in Venice from the Muse palette. Tomorrow's Party, Love in Venice. Okay, so Love in Venice is a totally different formula. I think it must be, yeah, it's the Luminous formula. So although it looks kind of deep in the pan, it's one of those semi shears. So it doesn't show up nearly in the same way. And then if we look again at tomorrow's party, let's build that up a little bit. But we can see that it's much more pink. Lost Summer looks very orangey and very warm in comparison to this more kind of almost like a cool rosy pink from tomorrow's party. I think the best candidate from the bronze palette would be this one right here. That's called Bliss. I think this is a duochrome shade. Put that there. That's not too far off. I think the base is more pinky. But when you combine it with that more kind of warm gold reflect, there are some similarities there. Let's also take a look at Maya in the Liquid Lurex formula. Now I feel like on the monitor, those are not looking too different, especially at like that angle, but in real life, and maybe you can see better in the reflect here, Maya pulls a lot more pink. And let's throw in Diana again. So Diana is much more orangey copper. Moving into Deep Ochre, which is a velvet, and this is the one that I have all over my lid. You'll be able to see that in the demo. Beautiful, rich, warm brown. There's something very satisfying about this color to me. So that's Deep Ochre, described as a rich, earthy brown. I just see so much nuance and complexity in the undertone of this shade. You can see a little bit of yellow in there, a little bit of a more kind of true brown, a little bit of a very warm, earthy copper, kind of mustardy. There's just a lot going on with that shade. From the bronze palette, I'm gonna pull on Magma. 
I think next to magma, you can really see that yellowy ochre in deep ochre, which is just completely lacking in magma. It almost looks more like a purpley maroon undertone on magma. And I also wanted to take a look at vintage mulberry in the Muse palette. This is also a velvet formula, just as deep ochre is. And you can see again, the undertones are quite different there. A lot more of a rosy, coppery type of undertone in vintage mulberry. Finally, it's time for Ritual, which is a top coat described as a soft, light gold with warm, sparkling pearls. There it is. I think it's going to be pretty hard to see this one swatched because it's so light and sheer. But there you can see the dimension on that. Very pale, warm champagne. I wanted to compare that again to one in the Muse palette, Taffeta Fan. Taffeta Fan is a luster formula, and I think it's the only luster formula in this collection. So it's not the same formula. But I think, yeah, there are definitely similarities there. And interesting too, just to see how the formulas look next to each other. So the luster looks much shinier and more of a wet look formula than I'm getting from the top coat. And I think part of that could be because the luster does have a bit of a base to it. So it just reflects a little bit differently than the top coat does with nothing underneath it. But I think the colors are actually not too far off. A little bit more of a perhaps a rosiness in Taffeta Fan. Let's also just for fun look at this shade in the Vega palette. This is Supernova. Just to kind of see how the cool version of a light shade would compare to the warm version. And you can really see that temperature difference. Much more silver in the uh, Supernova shade. And Supernova is in the Luminous formula, so all three different formulas here. Top Coat, Luster, and Luminous. And I forgot I wanted to compare Ritual with this linen shade in the Silk palette from Victoria Beckham. There they are on the fingers. So that's the top coat shade that's Ritual. And that's the VB linen, very different finishes. So there's Ritual and linen. Here is Cinnabar next to Muse, Cinnabar Muse. Cinnabar and Victoria Beckham Silk. And Cinnabar and Natasha Denona Bronze. And here's the whole Cinnabar palette swatched out. Raw Sienna, Bronzite, Fired Earth. Lost Summer, Deep Ochre, and Ritual. I'd have to say my two favorites in this one are definitely Deep Ochre. I just think that's really a unique shade. It's unassuming looking, but there's so much going on and I love that ochre yellowy undertone in that shade. And then also Raw Sienna is just such a useful really beautiful shade that is a warm crease transition shade, but it's not too warm. Again, it's more warm in kind of the more yellowy direction as opposed to the more peachy orangey direction, and I just really like that. And then of the two metallics in here, I think I prefer this one, which is bronzite. I just think, like I said before, that would be so beautiful all over the lid. So now with all the swatching and comparisons out of the way, let's get into how I did this eye look and how I finished off this whole look, what I used on my lips. I've also got a number of suggestions for other Lisa Eldridge lipsticks and lip glosses that you could use with this palette and with this look. So let's get into it.
For blush today, I've chosen this MAC blush. It's a mineralized blush and it's in the shade Love Joy. I thought that this would be a perfect shade and it's got a little bit of sheen. So I thought it would suit this look really nicely. So I'll just put a little bit of this on. And for highlighter, the Victoria Beckham Pearl Highlighter. I like to usually just apply this with my fingers. Now for lips for this look, I think there are so many options. I think really any of Lisa's warmer toned lipsticks would be perfect with this. From the new collection, I would say Velvet Enchantment would probably work. That would pick up on that more um, kind of reddish copper that I have on the eyes. I also think Velvet Sorcery would work, although it can pull a little bit cooler toned. I think it has that nice kind of grungy quality that would work well with this eye too. And then some of the older velvets like Velvet Affair, um, maybe even Velvet Decade, Velvet Fawn probably would all work beautifully. And then from the Luxuriously Lucent, I would go Palazzo maybe, uh, Meet Me in Berlin, I think would look great with this. And the Cinnabar gloss would be great. The Dragon gloss, the Dra Velvet Dragon lipstick, even Velvet Morning. So I think there are just so many options and I probably haven't even listed them all. But as I said, any of the warmer leaning lip shades from Lisa, I think would work very nicely with this eye look and with this palette in general. But I think since we're working with the Cinnabar palette, it only makes sense to go in with the Velvet Cinnabar lipstick. So I'm going to go in with the Cinnabar liner first and then the Velvet Cinnabar lipstick. There's the lipstick on and I have a little bit of it on my fingers from blending it out and I feel like I need a little more color on the cheeks. So I'm just adding that now. And here's the completed look. So just to round up my thoughts on this palette, again, I think this one is a very good quality. I particularly enjoyed working with this deep ochre velvet shade. Uh, I just thought that applied really nicely all over the lid and it looked so smooth. And one of the purposes of these velvets is to be able to use it as kind of a base for your eye look. And I think it worked really nicely for that. Everything applied beautifully on top of it. Something I still feel like I'm going to need to try in the future is using these satin metallic shades not on top of a matte like I did today. I do still want to see how they perform more on a bare lid or just a, a primed lid without any real color down on it or without even any kind of texture, that powdery texture of a matte can impact certainly the way that the satin metallic is going to shine. So I did try going in with the Pat McGrath Intensifies one to see how that would play with the metallics and with the top coat shade as well, just to see how much that would intensify. I didn't find that as effective as using the MAC Fix Plus to do the same thing. And the MAC Fix Plus did a better job at intensifying the shine and shimmer on the metallics and the top coats. But overall, this palette gave me exactly the type of look that I wanted today. I wanted something really rich and warm and earthy, and this was the perfect palette to do that. I think all of the formulas in here worked really nicely, but I do have to say that I think the metallics, or as she's now calling them, the satin metallics, are a little bit of a softer formula. They don't have that super high shine reflect um, that you sometimes get from metallics from other brands, so that's just something to be aware of. I think the fact that they're being called satin metallics now gives you an accurate idea of the type of finish that you can expect from this formula. So I think that's everything I wanted to say in this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I always love to see those. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.